Hi guys, I'm Sean and I wanted to do something a little different for me and talk about my favorite game, which is Planet Zoo. I've been watching people play Planet Zoo since the game came out in 2019 and I finally got my own PC a few months ago, bought the game, and have been playing it pretty much non-stop to make up for lost time. It's just kind of ironic that by the time I finally get Planet Zoo, it's looking more likely than ever that support is about to end. You know, we might only have one DLC left, which if you want to know more about, the Lady Designer has a really informative video on it. So yeah, knowing that support is probably ending soon, I felt really inspired by Red Panda Reggie's Top 30 Most Wanted Animals video, and I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring and make a video about my list too. This is mostly just for me, think about this video kind of like a time capsule from this sad but hopeful moment in Planet Zoo history. Some things I want to address before getting into my list, I was going to keep this at 30 animals like Reggie's, but I just couldn't do it. There are so many animals I feel like I need to talk about, and so these are all animals that I think could work with the current mechanics of Planet Zoo. I'm trying to be realistic and not overly optimistic. You know, if I go into this list saying that Frontier hypothetically introduces a brand new mechanic for aviaries, then this list would be just birds, and I think that's less interesting than having 40 animals I think could work in the current restraints of the game while still making it as well-rounded of a zoo game as possible, which I still don't think it is unless we get some of these species. I also want to say that a lot of these animals kind of go hand in hand with each other, which I'll explain as I go along. So yeah, without further ado, here is my top 40 animal wish list for Planet Zoo. So coming in at the bottom of my list is the Aye Aye, which if it was added would probably be the weirdest looking animal in the game. It looks more like an alien than a primate, but this would be our fourth lemur species and another animal endemic to Madagascar and a really cool addition to our nocturnal houses. Next is the elk, another deer species that I think would be cool to see in the game. They're the second largest deer behind the moose, and I think they'd be some great North American representation, which has been sparse ever since the Twilight Pack. Next is the Patagonian Mara, cabbie hair, whatever you want to call them. I think it'd be cool to get another rodent, and especially such a weird looking one. These guys would help bolster the game's South America roster, and while they're similar to capybaras, they're associated with grasslands rather than wetlands. They're one of the more quote-unquote boring animals on this list, but they're a common sight in zoos around me, and so I had to include them. The spectacled bear is one of the few bears still missing from the game, but it's unique in that it's the only bear native to South America. So like the Mara, it would just help out South American representation in the game. I remember before the Eurasia animal pack was teased, I was convinced we were going to get the Alpine animal pack, which would have had the spectacled bear in it, because these guys live in the Andes. But um, then we got Eurasia and we got the sloth bear instead, which I thought was really funny. Uh, but still, I'd love to see these guys in Planet Zoo. Keeping up the South American theme, we have the South American Kawadi. These guys are related to raccoons, they'd be another arboreal species, and again, they'd just really help the continent's representation in the game. Right now the Kawadi is number two on the meta wish list, and so the demand from the community is definitely there. Next up we have an interesting one, hummingbirds, which are the first walkthrough exhibit animal that I have on this list. I think hummingbirds would be a great fit for the walkthrough exhibits. I believe the San Diego Zoo now has a walkthrough hummingbird habitat. Uh, the setup would be really similar to the butterflies, and just like the butterflies, if we were to get hummingbirds, I think we'd get at least a couple different species that would be pretty easy to make reskins of each other and could be mixed in one walkthrough exhibit. I'm not very familiar with the many, many different species of hummingbirds, so the only one I really want is the ruby-throated hummingbird, because to me that's sort of the, the quintessential hummingbird. Uh, let me know what other species you think Frontier could add. South America is really dominating the bottom of this list, because next is the southern pudu, a super cute tiny deer which would be unique for the game because we don't have any of these small hoofstock species. Uh, I have a soft spot for these guys, which is why they're here. <laughs> but uh, another tiny deer would be the Reeves Muntjac, similar to the Pudu, but I think more common in captivity, and more importantly, some more Asian hoofstock representation, which I think the game could still use. Uh, this is the first animal where I'll mention a possible alternative. This niche of tiny Asian deer could also be filled by the tufted deer. I'd honestly be happy with either. 
Next is the turkey. It's crazy to me that we've had the Indian peafowl since the base game and we haven't gotten anything like it in any of the DLCs. Uh, it's a bird which will be a very common theme on this list because I think above all else Planet Zoo needs more birds and this would be our first North American bird. It's worth mentioning turkeys have been domesticated and so even though Frontier would probably base their turkey off the wild turkey, uh, they look similar and well you'll see where I'm going with this later on in the list. The Paulus's cat would be a really cool addition to the game. Again, like the spectacled bear, I thought we were getting this fluffy guy in the hypothetical alpine animal pack that never came to be. Uh, I think these guys would work really well in the game as a counterpart to the sand cat. They're both small wild cats, and while the sand cat is from the hot deserts of Africa, the Paulus's cat is from the cold mountains of Asia. Coming in at number 30, the Greater Rhea is the only Ratite still missing from the game, and so the completionist in me wants it. Once again, it would be some great South American representations, specifically the South American grasslands alongside the Maned Wolf and Patagonian Mara that I mentioned earlier. I know we have three penguins already, but hey, the more the merrier. I really want another Antarctic species of penguin to use in mixed habitats with the King Penguin, which is something commonly seen in zoos. I've gone with the southern rockhopper penguin because I believe their range reaches up to the tip of South America, so I think you could build them their own outdoor habitat, whereas king penguins are always housed inside. Uh, but some possible alternatives though are the similar macaroni penguin or the gentoo penguin. Any of these would serve the purpose of giving our king penguins some company and diversity in their habitats. It's kind of crazy to me that Africa has so many animals in this game. And we still don't have an African crocodile. The Nile crocodile would be perfect for these African river, wetlands, areas of our zoos, and I think it would be a great pick for a possible anniversary animal. The golden pheasant would be another bird for the underutilized peacock rig. <laughs> these guys are from China and would add a really awesome splash of color to our bird roster, or at least the males would, you know how it is. And this is when the primates really start rolling in. Uh, I think what the game needs most is more birds, but what the game needs second is more primates. The Hamadreus baboon would be a great African monkey that's sitting at number seven on the meta wish list, uh, similar to the mandrill, but you know, with the awesome modern DLC animal quality. Uh, possible alternatives for the Hamadreus are the olive baboon and the gelada. You might find it surprising that the yak is actually really high for me. Uh, after the wild water buffalo, I'd love to see Frontier make another bovine. Uh, but now for me, this is the domestic yak. But like I touched on with the turkey, I could see Frontier basing their version on the wild yak. Considering the Bakshin camel in Planet Zoo looks more like a wild camel than a domestic camel. Um, I'll have more to say about the yak later on, so sit tight. As soon as we got the mute swan in the Eurasia animal pack, I wanted the black swan. These guys would be a gorgeous addition to the Australia roster. They'd be really easy to make and I just, I love them. They're so pretty. They'd have interspecies enrichment with a kangaroo and wallaby and would make for some even cooler mixed species habitats in our Australian areas. Next is the golden lion tamarin and look, these guys, or really any tiny monkey, would be so nice to have, but if we did get the golden lion tamarin, I think it would be the smallest habitat animal in the game. And, and especially for an arboreal species, I, I feel like that would get tricky in some ways. I'd be happy getting them as habitat animals, but I do want to throw out the possibility of getting them as walkthrough exhibit animals. Uh, I know I've been in open air enclosures with tamarins a couple times, so it's, it's possible. Um, I think tamarins are important for South American representation, and so I would really like to see them implemented somehow. Um, some alternatives for these guys are the cotton top tamarin, the pied tamarin, the emperor tamarin, and the common marmoset, although if these guys were walkthrough exhibit animals, I could see us getting all of them and mixing them together like the butterflies and hummingbirds. The sea otter would be another great marine mammal that would represent the open ocean, which for obvious reasons isn't really covered by the Planet Zoo roster, 
So I'd love to get more animals to populate aquariums or marine sections of our zoos that still work with how the game operates. Uh, also, these guys are so cute and I saw them in person for the first time recently and it was actually at a zoo and not an aquarium, so I, I think they'd be a great addition. For very similar reasons, next up is the walrus. This would be our third pinniped, perfect for both the coastal and arctic areas of our zoos. I've actually never seen a walrus in person, but I know they are held in some zoos and aquariums, and so that's already more precedent to include them than something like, you know, the Saiga. Um, it's also at number three on the meta wish list, so the walrus is definitely in high demand. At number 20, halfway through, is the white stork. We got a crane, please give us a stork. The white stork has a range that includes Africa, Europe, and Asia, so they'd be a very versatile species, and come on, it's a bird. More birds, please. Uh, this spot, though, is really for any stork, and so possible alternatives are the very scary marabou stork and the colorful saddle-billed stork. I feel like the short-beaked echidna is the last essential animal from Australia. Uh, after Frontier nailed the African crested porcupine, I feel like they could pull off an echidna no problem. Uh, these guys are one of the very few mammals that lay eggs, and so we could put them in dedicated monotreme houses with the platypus. It, it would be great. Uh, and they're much more common in zoos than their semi-aquatic cousins. The mallard duck is the first bird on this list to make use of the new waterfowl rig introduced by the mute swan. That isn't just another swan. Uh, it felt like a door was opened with the mute swan, and so I really hope we get some ducks to toss in with them and really populate our lakes and ponds. I've chosen the mallard duck for how recognizable it is and the fact it ranges from North America to Eurasia, so it could actually have interspecies enrichment with the mute swan. Uh, but for some slightly more exciting ducks, possible alternatives could be the equally iconic wood duck or the striking mandarin duck. Bring on the petting zoos. To me, the Nigerian dwarf goat is a must-have inclusion, considering pretty much every zoo has a petting zoo. Ideally, goats would come in a dedicated petting zoo pack along with domestic chickens and pigs and sheep, uh, all of which were originally on my list but pretty quickly fell in favor of more exciting picks. Uh, but not the Nigerian dwarf goat, uh, and the pygmy goat could be a possible alternative. These guys have so much color variation, and they're so quintessentially petting zoo that they could hold up a barn-themed area all by themselves. But here's my master plan. If we were to only get a goat as a dedicated domestic animal, the turkey and yak could also double as petting zoo animals since they have been domesticated. Along with the llama and the dromedary camel, you've got yourself a proper little petting zoo. It's It could work, guys. Okay. Prepare yourself for a lot of birds. The Scarlet Ibis is a wading bird from South America that would add some size variation to our terrestrial avian species. This spot is really reserved for any ibis though. Um, the Scarlet, Scarlet Ibis is just, you know, the most colorful, the most well-known, but I, I would also love to see the African Sacred Ibis or the Northern Bald Ibis. I really just think this is a group of birds that should have a representative in the game. The southern ground hornbill from Africa is the largest species of hornbill and would be another great bird to see in Planet Zoo. I've seen these guys paired with bongos at multiple zoos, so I'd give them interspecies enrichment, uh, and they would just be a really unique inclusion. And then the Atlantic puffin as a proper seabird would be a great addition to represent the open oceans, much like the sea otter. Similar to penguins, but with a colorful twist, they'd be perfect for aquariums or marine areas. Again, just like the sea otter, but a bird. Next up is the eastern black and white colobus, uh, also known as the mantled jeriza, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, it's a much needed African monkey. We do have the mandrill, and I've proposed the hamadreus baboon, but I think we really need a proper, like, monkey from Africa, known for hanging out in the treetops, like the proboscis or capuchin that we already have you know, if that makes sense. Uh, to me, the colobus is the most iconic of these African monkeys, but some possible alternatives are the Debraza's monkey and the red-capped mangabe. One of my more out there picks, we have the green sea turtle. Again, some more open ocean marine representation. These guys are actually found worldwide, which I think is pretty cool. 
they're one of the few animals that are common sites in aquariums that are still capable of coming out of the water. And so because of that, I think they could work in Planet Zoo. Uh, since we don't have anything quite like a sea turtle, I think they'd be a really exciting inclusion. I've said it once and I'll say it again, we need more primates and specifically more monkeys. The black howler monkey from South America would be great to see in Planet Zoo. They make such distinct sounds and they'd be able to use the chorus behavior of the wolves and gibbons and like the lar gibbons, their coats come in both black and gold for some, some striking in-species color variation. Others seem to agree since the howler sits at number 5 on the meta wishlist. Number 10 on my wishlist and number 9 on the meta, the shoebill is another awesome wading bird from Africa. I could see it being added for its iconography, like you know how the quokka was probably added for its adorable online presence, I could see the shoebill being added for its horrifying online presence. <laughs> Another South American monkey I really think we could use is the Joffroys or Black-Handed Spider Monkey. To me, spider monkeys are the quintessential zoo monkeys. I've been using that word a lot, forgive me. Um, and so I think it's unfortunate that we still don't have any spider monkeys. These guys are one of the few primates that can brachiate and so I think they should be included just to have another animal that makes use of that behavior. Uh, an alternative would be the black-headed spider monkey, which I'm mentioning because they're what they have at my local zoo. The gray-crowned crane would be the second species of crane in the game. While the red-crowned crane is found in Asian wetlands, the gray-crowned crane is found in African grasslands. Uh, it would be a great bird to stick into large mixed species African savanna habitats with our giraffes and gazelles and zebras. Uh, just a great bird. The American flamingo or Caribbean flamingo would be a clone of the greater flamingo, but it's still an animal that I really want in the game. Flamingos, they're my favorite bird. If we've gotten a pale pinkish white African flamingo, give us the vibrant reddish pink of the American flamingo to use in the tropical Central American areas of our zoos. Because it would be so similar to an animal that we already have, I think the American flamingo would make for a good anniversary animal. And it would have interspecies enrichment with the scarlet ibis, and the next bird, which is the roseate spoonbill, another vibrant wading bird to stick in with our flamingos and help round out these waterfowl enclosures. The African spoonbill could be a possible alternative, which would be a perfect pairing with the greater flamingo. Really, I just want more visual diversity in my bird habitats. We have reached my top five. You knew it was coming. It had to be here somewhere. It's the secretary bird. <laughs> like the gray crowned crane, this species is found in African grasslands, but it's very unique in that it's a mostly terrestrial bird of prey. Uh, the demand for this thing is high. It's at number one on the meta wish list, and it's been there for a while, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I remember thinking we were getting it in the grasslands animal pack, and then the arid animal pack, and it's, it's a little crazy to me that we still don't have the secretary bird. Okay, I know that so far I've made a big deal of sticking to the game's current mechanics. My aquatic picks, they've been, you know, the sea otter, the sea turtle, because they can still come out on land. But if there is one animal that I feel like Frontier could make an exception for, it's the West Indian manatee. These guys are absolutely iconic uh, and would be the first, and on this list, the only fully aquatic animal in Planet Zoo. I got to see these guys at the Columbus Zoo and it, it was amazing. Uh, I feel like manatees are kind of a reasonable halfway point between the seal and sea lion that we already have and then the dolphins and porpoises that people have been asking for for ages. I like to think that manatees and possibly other fully aquatic animals could work in Planet Zoo as long as there's like a sliver of land by the habitat gate for keepers to stand on to refill feeders and release animals directly into the water. I can live without fish and dolphins, but I would really, really like manatees. Uh, call me crazy, but I think between manatees, sea turtles, puffins, sea otters, I think we could make decent aquariums without actually needing fish. Number three for me is the great white pelican. Once again, as soon as we got the mute swan, it opened this door of possibilities in my mind. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I love waterfowl. And just like the ducks and the spoonbills, I think a pelican would be a great addition to any waterfowl habitats. I've chosen the great white pelican because they're native to 
both Africa and Asia, and their breeding range even reaches up into Europe, I believe, so they, they offer a lot of versatility. For some alternatives, though, I'd, I'd also be happy with the Australian pelican, the American white pelican, or honestly, even the brown pelican. I just want a pelican, guys, and if we don't get one before support ends, I will be very sad. Oh, walkthrough exhibits. Introduced along with the Twilight Pack for the Egyptian fruit bat, they felt like such a breakthrough. You know, flying animals were finally in Planet Zoo. This was obviously how Frontier was paving the way for birds. First it was bats, then it was butterflies. Our feathered friends, they felt closer than ever, but then a year went by and still no birds. It would feel like Frontier has been purposefully teasing us if we don't get a bird in these walkthrough exhibits before support ends. I've proposed hummingbirds, but we all know what we really want. Number two is macaws. Just like the butterflies and the hypothetical hummingbirds or tamarins, we would get several species of macaws that can be mixed together in our walkthrough exhibits. I've picked the scarlet macaw, the blue and yellow macaw, the military macaw, and the hyacinth macaw. These four species offer a wide range of vibrant colors to bring some extra life to our South American areas. And, you know, flying birds to the game, finally. We reached number one, which is absolutely perfect for the walkthrough exhibits because so many zoos that I've gone to have had these. Budgies, parakeets, whatever you want to call them, and again, like the butterflies, similar species would also be added to be mixed in the same exhibits. Cockatiels, eastern rosellas, rainbow lorikeets. Um, I tried doing a bit of research, uh, and I, I don't actually think lorikeets are ever really housed with these other birds, but they're so iconic and they filled the same niche that I, I just I had to mention them here as well. Um, but to me, this is what the walkthrough exhibits were obviously made for, and so the fact that we still don't have parakeets makes me think that Frontier has to be saving them for the final DLC. They know we want birds more than anything, and, and so unless they're 100% committed to saving birds for a possible Planet Zoo 2, I can't see support ending before we get such an obvious inclusion as, as budgies. So I, I wanted to conclude this video by doing a bit of speculation for what I think this final DLC will be. As much as I want more monkeys and more marine animals, I'm hoping we're looking at an avian animal pack. Not an aviary pack, although that would be a very pleasant surprise. Uh, I'm expecting a big, final, feathered DLC with the secretary bird as the headliner animal, since it's been so highly requested for so long. Um, and since this is the final DLC, it might include more animals than an average pack at a higher price point. I don't know how many more animals, but in my ideal avian animal pack, we get the top 15 to 20 birds from this list of mine. And that's it. Thank you to whoever sat through me rambling about possible video game animals for almost 30 minutes. Um, I really appreciate it. Keep playing Planet Zoo and shouting about how much we love it so that support lasts for as long as humanly possible. But hey, there's always mods. <laughs> See you next time.